This one, I actually bought this when I was 18. Tom Petty only ever wanted one job, to be a musician. I wrote all my uh, songs for about 20 years with this guitar. After selling some 60 million albums, he's more than qualified to call himself a rock star. We'll talk on the streets as you may go solo. Good friend of mine say, leave me back down. But he's never really acted like one. You have this image as being a very kind of laid back guy. I'm not that laid back. I'm, I'm pretty determined and I have a lot of energy, but I just don't always speak unless I have something to say. Mm -hmm. I, it's, I, I don't court the limelight really. But Petty found the limelight as frontman of the Heartbreakers a classic rock band that made its reputation in concert. The evidence is on their new live anthology, which covers three decades of heartbreaker performances. It's those live shows that have kept the band in business for 33 years, as Petty says, that's where the blood gets spilled. If I thought about the responsibility too much, it'd scare me to death. Even today, the singer still gets nervous before a gig. I think if you're going out to, say, 30,000 people mm -hmm. and you don't get nervous, there's something not plugged in, you know? So this is your office? Well, yeah, I guess you could call it that. It's We met Petty in what he and the Heartbreakers call the Clubhouse, their studio in a Los Angeles warehouse about an hour from the Malibu home he shares with his wife, Dana. We were counting before, 144 guitars. And you only need one. <laughs> so what happened? Yeah. It got a little out of hand. And his collection, this is the one, is still growing from the cover of uh, Damn the Torpedoes. Damn the Torpedoes was Petty's breakthrough album. One that in 1979 established him as a star. A song for Petty can begin with just a riff. Ah, it went like... That's how he started his 1981 classic, The Waiting. That's all I had, see? I did that for a week. <laughs> and then finally I'd hit the waiting is the hardest part. Every day you see one more card. You take it on faith, you take it to the heart. The waiting is the hardest part. Do you know when you've written a good song? Not always. The bees are the dangerous things, you know. Because <laughs> they can sometimes They can act sometimes like A's. look like A's. <laughs> yeah. And when do they finally reveal themselves? Well, in the recording, you, yeah. you, get, you get a little... If a bee's sitting right next to an A, uh -huh. it, it just can't pull it off. Can't hide. Yeah. Yeah, running down a dream that never would come to me. He's had more than his share of A's, of course. His greatest hits album alone has sold more than 10 million copies. I'm free. Free for it. You were never ashamed of commercial success. No. Why would you be? Who came up with that? There are some artists who, you know, think if you get too successful, somehow it cheapens you in some way. And, and I haven't had that problem. But he has knocked heads with the recording industry, famously refusing to allow his record label to raise the price on his albums. There is this theme running through a lot of what you've done and through your music, the whole I won't back down theme. 
Yeah. Yeah, that keeps cropping up. I just like things to be right. Growing up in Gainesville, Florida, Petty says he was verbally abused by his father. His anger would fuel his ambition. Eddie waited till he finished high school. I have a problem with authority for a lot of my life. You know, authority figures. He met a girl out there with the tattoo too. I had to constantly challenge them because I felt like maybe I'd been done wrong when I was young. Everybody's got somebody to lean on. Some of his happiest times, Petty remembers, were spent with a little pickup band called the Traveling Wilburys. Working with George Harrison, Jeff Lynne, Roy Orbison, and Bob Dylan. What's it like writing with Dylan? He's, he's, he's just as good as you think he would be. You know, I was there for a reason, so I had to get past his bobness, you know? His I mean, bobness. <laughs> you know, I had to... Well, how do you get past that? I mean, it's got to be intimidating sitting down with him. Well, he's, it is, but he's a person. He's really Betty right. says he felt more like a person in the Wilburys. That was the greatest luxury, was to not be the one guy with the spotlight on you. And you know, George was the same way. He never wanted to be out front. And we used to talk about it a lot. Former Beatle George Harrison became Petty's close friend. You've described him as one of the funniest people you ever met. Yeah, he was very fun. Which is not how I think of George Harrison. Oh, he had such a amazingly keen wit. He was anything but the quiet Beatle. Harrison later sang back up on one of Petty's best known songs, I Won't Back Down. And he actually made a contribution about one line, or at least said he didn't like one line. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Well, the line got changed to, there ain't no easy way out. Right. At, at the time, I didn't have a, a line there, and I kept singing, uh, I'm standing on the edge of the world. And he, he said, hey, that doesn't get it. You know, you, <laughs> what's with that? You know, you know. So he called you out on this he line. Caught, well, he, that's the way he was. The thought went through, it, it came out. <laughs> and you changed the line. Yeah, it made the song better. Eddie's music, which has its roots in the 50s and 60s, somehow sounds timeless. But Petty knows he isn't. You have a birthday coming up next year that some people might consider to be pretty big. 60. You say it easily. Yeah, well, you know, if you're not getting older, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> The Heartbreakers are working on another album, their first in seven years. The way Tom Petty sees it, the music will tell him when it's time to go. If I get where I'm not good, I'll just, I'll fade into the background because I don't want to be up there if I can't do my gig. Yeah, running down a dream.